We're standing in the National Gallery of Art, and we're looking at Salvador Dali's The Sacrament of the Last Supper. As the title suggests, the work depicts the scene during the Last Supper when the bread and wine become Christ's body and blood. Although the subject matter is very popular, this particular piece presents one of the most striking interpretations of the biblical event in modern art history. Yes, as a matter of fact, this piece, painted in 1955, has been the subject of both scorn and admiration amongst critics because it represents Dali's fascination with science and religion in the post-war era. True, and in order to do that, he paints a religious scene but uses scientific elements to produce it, and this seamlessly unites the two schools of thought. Dali achieves this through the use of linear perspective and more prominently through his use of geometry. Yes, and that's interesting because science and religion are traditionally opposing ideals. But here, Dolly shows how the two really can be harmonious. It's a really fascinating point. This idea really comes through Dolly's use of the triangle, one of the most fundamental geometric shapes. Dolly forms a triangle between the two pieces of the bread and the wine. There is also a triangle between Jesus and the two kneeling apostles. Another can be seen between the two hands of the floating torso and Christ. But the triangle is not only a scientific symbol, it has religious connotations too. Of course, the Holy Trinity. Yes, the three quarters corners of the shape symbolize the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The triangle is a concrete symbol of Christianity and art. The artist has reinforced this theme of science and religion through the repetition of the triangle. But what should we make of the other components, like the transparent figures or the structure around them? Their meanings are not as intuitive. Hmm, I think they address an overall theme of religion and belief itself. Dali compels us to pose the question, what is faith? And what basis do we believe? And the painting itself provides us the answers. Look at the clouds. Dali is using a softer color palette, which corresponds to the painting's other ethereal qualities, like the torso that floats above them. These lighter hues give the work a fluffier, airier feel, with the use of blues, whites, and tans. You're right. He also uses smooth brush strokes and refrains from adding painterly textures. Think about the texture of Van Gogh's painting. Thick layers of paint usually reminds the viewer that the painting is actually a painting, but Dali purposefully rids the painting of its self-awareness. And that, I think, mirrors the nature of faith itself. Faith maintains the balance between reality and the other world. We do not base our religious beliefs on factual evidence. It isn't founded on anything concrete. Indeed, faith subsists on the intangible such as age-old stories. And biblical stories are some of the oldest ones. We don't know how much of the Last Supper truly took place, nor do we know what exactly happened, yet we still choose to believe in its authenticity. Instead of any definitive facts, what believers have spiritually attached to the event provides the basis for their faith. This idea is also emphasized through the apostles. They have their heads bowed deep in prayer. They choose not to look at Jesus. This could mean that they don't need physical proof of him to retain their faith. Their devotion surpasses the need for material assurance. <laughs> and that's contrary to human nature, isn't it? Especially in today's day and age, seeing is believing. But here, Dali shows us that the notion of blind faith is still relevant. The juxtaposition of tangible geometric forms and the idea of blind faith suggests a certain duality between the tangible and the intangible. Likewise, Dali's Sacrament of the Last Supper is rooted in neither reality nor fiction. Such as the architecture that encases them, that too has a translucent quality. Precisely. It really dissolves into the background, doesn't it? Although the structure that holds them is made of concrete materials, it seems to stand neither in water nor on land. And the sun also adds to this quality as it melts across the sea surface. Exactly. The sun's effects make the misty, pastel landscape look heavenly. But then the foreground and background encroach into each other's space, obscuring any definitive distinction. Where does heaven end and where does this world begin? Yes, and take a look at the two center figures. The figure of Christ is close to ground and painted naturalistically. On the other hand, the large torso above him is much more surreal. But if we look closer, the Christ figure does not cast any shadows, but the torso does. Take a look at his left hand casting its shadow on the window. Again, the delineation between reality and holy world is blurred. 
While our attention is on the right side of the painting, I see another interesting element. Out of all the apostles seated at the table, only one is wearing yellow. Chances are that Dali is singling out Judas. Definitely. Judas is also sitting on Jesus' left, the side traditionally associated with evil. He paints religious subject matter but brings science into it. He also shows that modern scientific elements and traditional imagery can be combined, not only in modern life, but in modern art as well. Yes, and he even shows that modern art techniques can be used as well. Surrealist techniques can foster the age-old story. They show it from a different perspective. And Dolly's reinterpretation is a significant one, coming out of World War II. Yes, a time when many were reevaluating their beliefs in God. Exactly. The Sacrament of the Last Supper in many ways embodies this internal struggle between the need for hope in the post-war era and the disillusioning effects of the Second World War.